working on my 5 inch gauge sterling single and this is finishing the painting of the front bogey. This beautiful 5 inch gauge sterling single is a lovely engine and it's built from the Clarkson kit of castings. Blackgate's engineering supply the castings and parts for all of the Clarkson range of model steam engines. In this clip I'm thumbing through the pages of the Blackgate's Clarkson catalogue and I'm looking for a picture of the sterling single and some details about it. I already have the drawings because I do need to make one or two parts for this engine, like for instance the steam brake assembly at the back. And finally in the catalogue I find a line drawing for a 5 inch gauge Patrick Sterling 8 foot single. And here are a few details from within the catalogue. This is my favourite locomotive of all time, and I don't know why really. These beautiful iconic locomotives used to run around this area where I live but unfortunately many years before I leapt out into the world in 1953. So what have we here? It's a piece of wood. It is a painting jig. They're very easy to construct out of scrap pieces of wood and they do make painting parts like this a lot easier. For instance, if I was doing this part of the job which is painting inside the frames and holding the part in my hand, by now it would be starting to get very heavy. But the painting jig takes a strain and allows me to put the part exactly when I need it to be. But the main benefit of using a painting jig like this means that you can make sure that the surfaces that you are painting are horizontal and not vertical. That way gravity will not get in the way and the paint cannot run. To paint the centre part though I have removed it from the jig just to do this bit. So why am I going to such great lengths to paint this with black paint on the inside and the authentic Great Northern Railway chocolate brown on the outside? especially seeing as most of this is not very visible when it's fitted to the engine. And the answer to that is to make sure all of the steel is covered by paint so it doesn't rust and because the full size was painted in this way. I sprayed the chocolate brown colour onto the outside of the frames. I'm just painting the inner part of the frames black because I got quite a lot of chocolate brown overspray on the internal parts. This simple painting job took quite a long time to do, a surprising amount of time. But you need to be very patient with this and don't make a mess of it and make sure you don't get any black paint on the chocolate brown and eventually it looks like this. Here is a clip of the paint drying. I'll leave it on screen for a moment or two so you can take it all in. Please try to not get too excited about this. That's enough of that. Now it's time to put it together starting with these pegs. These are hollow pegs that fit into the springs. The springs are not real, they're dummy springs and they use coil springs on each end of the dummy springs. On top of each of the dummy springs there's a lubrication cup and if you put some oil in there it travels down the hollow tubes and lubricates the axle boxes. Time now to refit the wheels to the bogey and I need a special tool for this because a normal socket is too big to go between the spokes. But this one is ok, it fits perfectly. So one by one, first of all with the socket and then with the spanner, I fit the axle box keeper plates back in place, being very careful not to mark the paint on the wheels. One problem with miniature steam engines after they've been painted is making sure that you don't damage the paint, but luckily this paint is really well stuck to the metal. But this is not always the case, particularly on brass parts. Very shortly I intend to do a test to find out which is the best etch primer to stick paint to brass, and I will of course be videoing this experiment and showing you my findings. But at the moment, alas, I am quite busy with my normal job. And in case you didn't know, that is working as a recording engineer in my recording studio. And currently I'm very busy composing and recording the music for a summer show. These days though, I don't need to sleep as much as I used to, because I is well old in it. So I get up quite early in the morning, and I'm either straight into the editor from the video from the day before, or in the workshop making some more video and doing other jobs. I also have quite a lot of modelling jobs to do. By modelling jobs, I don't mean that I strip down to my underwear and strut up and down on the catwalk. I mean model engineering jobs, steamboats, steam engines, steam locomotives, and any other kind of interest in steam machines. This is a rare glimpse inside my house, showing the tender that belongs to the Stirling single, and again, like the engine, it's absolutely beautifully made. It's sat on an oak display cabinet that I bought a while back. And I bought this display case to house the Great Western Railway 14XX locomotive that I modified and rebuilt a while ago. And the good news is that this cabinet matches all the other woodwork in my dining room. 
and for the very observant viewers who will have noticed that there are a couple of keyboards reflecting in the glass, those are the keyboards from a 1967 Hammond L102 tone wheel organ. This final clip shows the Stuart No. 4 generating plant which sits on the sideboard. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.